Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael and I've finally added a road surface to Station Road. It goes down the hill, around the mini roundabout and on up High Street on my N-gauge layout set in a rundown Yorkshire town in 1993. I use the free software Inkscape to do all my drawings. In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how I would go from a blank sheet of paper to this somewhat worn curved T-junction, ready to print out and place on a model railway layout. Let's get on then. The road goes on, drawing a realistic road for your model railway layout. So here we are in Inkscape looking at a blank sheet of paper. Let's use File Document Properties to make the desk white instead of grey and scroll up to a nice empty part of the canvas. So a road then. A road is just a rectangle, right? Wrong. A rectangle is fine for a simple straight road, but you will still get so much more from what I'm about to show you if you stop thinking as rectangles. A road is a line. Here's a simple line. I've made it 0.1mm wide as it's going to be my guideline throughout the whole drawing process. Let's duplicate the line. Edit, duplicate. I will use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl and D for this from now on. We now have two lines. Let's make this one 60mm wide and pink. Move it to the back and there is the fat line behind the thin one. This is the start of our road. Although it looks like a rectangle, it is still a line. See, it can be moved and bent. But after all that, we really do want this copy to be a rectangle. So let's use path, stroke to path to turn it into a shape. See, it's now a shape. Because we started by duplicating it, we still have the original guideline and this is vitally important. Don't delete this bit. We use lines to help us create the shapes we need for our road. Let's duplicate the line again and make it 100 millimeters wide. And orange. This is our pavement. We can repeat this whole process, but with a curved line. Always duplicate before making a change. This one will be a bit wider than the first. It is vital that you keep the guideline in place as the centre of the road, so don't delete it. Let's move the vertical pavement behind the curved one. This looks okay. This is the shape of the road that we will use. It's really worth knowing how to do this, as gently curved or unusually shaped yet still realistic roads can help to add realism to your layout. This looks about right, but if we change the colour of these bits, you can see that they are still separate shapes. Let's click on the curved road and then click on the vertical one with shift held down. This means we've got both selected. We can then use path union to convert this into one shape. I will use the keyboard shortcut control and plus to do this from now on. Let's do the same for the two pavements. And now you can see I have two shapes, one of the road surface and one wider one, which is the pavements. Let's duplicate the road and make it darker so you can see what's going on. I'm now going to select the new copy of the road and the pavement. And using path, difference, or a keyboard shortcut control and minus, the top shape, the road, is used as a template to cut a hole in the bottom shape, the pavement. If I move the pavement aside, you can see that there is a big hole where the road was. It's still all one shape though. Let's break it into individual parts. With the pavement selected, I use path, break apart, and now the single shape with the hole becomes three separate shapes, each one being part of the pavement. We now have a pink road and three orange pieces of pavement. Time to move on to modelling the junction. It's quite rare for a road to join another straight on like this. Junctions are usually far more curved. Let's curve this one out a bit. Let's select the road and then use the node tool. You'll see small markers dotted around the shape. These are the shape's nodes, the points where the shape's lines interconnect. I'm going to double click somewhere down here and this adds a new node on the existing line. See, I can move it around if I wanted to. I'm going to add one over here too. Now, I'm going to select the node in the corner up here and just press delete. This removes the sharp point and leaves me with a much nicer curve. Now, I can fiddle around a bit until I have one that looks good. That will do. Now, let's repeat that over here. Super. The pavements look wrong now though, so let's select them and delete them. Now we need to put the pavement back. Select the road and duplicate it. 
Set its fill colour to nothing and its line to magenta. Now we are going to grow the shape outwards. Go to the Path menu and select Path Effects. This opens the Path Effects panel. Click the plus to add a new path effect to the shape. There are loads of exciting things to choose from, but we want Offset. It adds some settings over here, but we can ignore these for now. The road copy is still selected, and we now choose the Node tool again. Just like before, you see the shape's nodes. But now, there is a big red dot. Watch what happens as we drag this up and down. The shape grows and shrinks. And the dot snaps to the upper part of the pavement here. So down there, we have the exact shape of pavement that we want. Let's tidy it up a bit. Use Path, Object to Path to convert the special shape back into a normal one. Let's remove the line colour and make it dark orange. Move it to the back. Excellent, this looks good. Duplicate the main road again and use Ctrl and minus to cut it out of the new pavement shape just like before. This puts the hole back into it again. We need to trim off these edges though. Draw a line down the road edge, snapping to the straight bit. Hold Ctrl and Shift to keep the line the same angle and drag the corner to bring the line across the edge of the new pavement, on both sides. Select one line and the new pavement and use Path Division. Repeat for the other side. This cuts the overhang off into a separate shape, which we can then delete. Repeat for the bottom. And then use Shift Ctrl K to split it into separate shapes. OK, the road shape looks good. Let's add the dashed white lines. This is the GovUK Traffic Signs Manual. It is hundreds and hundreds of pages of specifications for anything that may ever get painted on a UK road surface. Let's look at Chapter 5. Here on page 12 are the specifications for centre line markings and the table of their dimensions, depending on road width and speed limit. But I want this one, markings in built-up areas with junctions and hazards. So the lines are 4 metres long, with 2 metre gaps. And they are 10 centimetres wide on roads under 10 metres, and 15 centimetres wide on wider roads. Let's draw a rectangle. It needs to be 4,000 millimetres divided by N scale, which is 148 millimetres wide and 100 divided by 148 tall. Duplicate it and make the gap 2000 divided by 148. So here's a line and a gap. We could group it, copy it, paste it, rotate it, drag it, duplicate it, drag it, and so on. But that's already a pain. And what about this curve here? There has to be a better way. This is not it. Before we go on, we need to find the edge of the main road. Select the centre curved guideline and duplicate it. Colour it blue and make it 80mm wide. So this is the edge of the main road, and this is where the white lines should stop. Select the vertical road guide. Zoom in. And with the node tool, double click on the intersection with the road edge to add a new node just there. Select the original end and delete it. Delete the fat blue line. The vertical road line now ends at the edge of the main road. Right, centre lines. So the trick here is to make a single shape that includes the gap. So, draw a line down the edge of the gap. Delete the gap. Select the line and the gap. And do a path union. The line at the end of the gap vanishes. This is because it is part of the shape and the shape has no line colour. Add a magenta line and you can see it there at the edge. With the new shape selected, we can use Edit, Copy or Ctrl and C to copy the shape. Now, select and duplicate the centre line of the vertical road. Go over to the Path Effects panel and press the plus button. This time, we're going to select Pattern Along Path. There are lots of options here. But as Pattern Source, select the third icon, Paste Path, and change the pattern copies to Repeated. And there we are, all the white lines to the correct dimensions added along our guideline. We can see them better once coloured black and the line colour is removed. But what's this? Our line doesn't go right up to the edge we've just worked out. 
This is because it will only add the number of shapes that fit fully into the guide. Our line includes the line and its gap, and one line and a gap won't fit into this space. And the dashes have started at the bottom of the line instead of the top. Let's fix that. Delete the dashed line and select the guideline. Use Path Reverse to swap what Inkscape thinks is the start and end of the line. Add the Pattern Along Path Path Effect. Clipboard Source Repeated Pattern Copies. And there, the pattern starts at the top. Let's make its guideline a bit longer so that another dashed line fits in. And chop off the remaining gap part with a rectangle and a path difference. By selecting the Node tool, we can see that this has become one shape with each dash an individual component. We can use Path Break Apart to turn these back into individual shapes if we want. Let's repeat the whole thing for the main road. Not bad. The rectangle we created earlier has been distorted to be as curved as the guideline and we didn't have to worry about a thing. To put the give way line in place, we need the road edge back. Remember what I said about never deleting a guideline? I should listen to my own advice. Duplicate and fatten the centre line again. Do a stroke to path, remove the fill and add a line colour. Double click to add a node here. And then select Break Path at Selected Nodes. Do the same over here. Do a Path Break Apart and delete the bit we don't want. So here's the guideline for our Give Way line. I think the centre line of the vertical road would be better if it curved into the centre of this give way line. So let's delete the dashed line and bend the duplicate of the guideline into place, re-adding and trimming the pattern as we go. That looks good. Now just add a node and split the guideline into the left half and right half. And here on page 25 of chapter 3 of the Traffic Signs Manual is a specification for a give way line. Using the same technique as before, let's make one dash and its gap in Inkscape and add it to the guideline. The double dashed part is specified on the legislation.gov.uk website. Taking the measurements from there, we can draw that in Inkscape too. We can use the normal offset to line the edge of the line up with the one on the right. And by converting to a path and breaking it apart, we can clear away the rectangles that overlap the pavement. Let's do the double yellow lines now. You can get the dimensions of the double yellow lines from the legislation.gov.uk website. Let's duplicate the top pavement, remove its fill and set a line colour. We'll make the line 100 divided by 148 millimetres, which is a scale yellow line width. Breaking the path in the corners, like when working on the edge guide earlier, we will just keep the inner line. Let's add an offset path effect. But instead of dragging the red dot this time, let's be a bit more accurate. Let's make the offset negative 2mm. So the gap between the two yellow lines seems to be the same as the width of one of the lines, which means that we need to move the second line down 200 scale millimetres. So we duplicate it and take off another 200 divided by 148 millimetres. There we are, two yellow parallel lines that follow the curve of the road, done in a few clicks and keystrokes. Convert them both back into normal shapes with path stroke to path. And then let's repeat for the other edges now. Duplicate the pavement, set the line width, break the path in the corners, delete the bit we don't want, add an offset path effect, offset by negative two, Duplicate, offset by negative 3.35. Repeat. Convert them all back to normal shapes. I noticed at this point that my give way line should have had its top edge rather than centre running along the road edge. So I redid it and used the setting normal offset to nudge it down. I then noticed that I should have left a gap to the right of the centre line. So I did it again. Almost any painted symbol on a UK road is somewhere in this document's 1000 pages. I imported page 25 into Inkscape by doing a file open 
on the PDF document. This let me go into the grouped diagrams and select the giveaway triangle. Pasting it into my own drawing, I changed its colour to black. I checked the dimensions in the manual. And then, with the aspect ratio lock on, I changed its height. 3750 divided by 148. This scales it down in both dimensions. I drew a yellow rectangle to the correct height to represent the distance the triangle should be away from the giveaway line. And then using snapping and dragging the rotation handle to the corner, I rotated the guide and the triangle into place. I did a bit more adjusting by eye. My general road layout is complete. Time to colour it in. I copied the whole thing and pasted it elsewhere in the document. I deleted all of the guidelines and then added colours to suit. This already looks great, but we can improve it further by using textures. You can use any texture image you like. I downloaded a basic tarmac texture from textures.com for this example. Simply drag it into your document. It's not a seamless texture which you can tile like wallpaper, it's just a rectangular photo of a road surface. I duplicated and rotated it and roughly covered the road surface with it. I then selected each one, grouped them and sent them to the back. With these selected, I also select the road surface. Then right click and choose Set Clip. This applies the lower selection to the upper selection, thereby filling the road surface with the texture. This looks okay, but we can see the edges of the rectangular texture. We can do better. Let's take this single bit of texture. I'm going to draw a white circle, a black star, and a 50% grey square. I group them, and then select the group and the texture, right click, and select Set Mask. What's happened? The white circle now contains the texture that was under it. The black star has vanished, and the grey square is still there, but it now contains the texture, but at 50% transparency. It's partly see-through. That's what masking does. It makes parts of the masked shape more transparent as the mask colour goes from white to black. We can use this to help blend the textures together. I draw a rectangle over the texture, and then apply a graduated fill by using the graduated fill button and dragging up on the rectangle. Select the start node and set it to white. Move that up a bit. Select the end node and set it to black. Select the rectangle and the texture and click set mask. This fades the texture out at the top. And if we duplicate it and put it on top of the other one, you can see that the hard edge vanishes and it blends together nicely. Let's add another one with the fade going across and apply that as a mask to the first. This now fades out on two edges. We can now arrange them all again and not have the hard lines. Group. Set clip. The road markings near where I live are all worn out and never look as crisp as this. We could change the transparency of the road markings like this to make them see through. But in the UK, the thick paint doesn't seem to fade like it does in some countries. It tends to wear and chip away completely, leaving completely bare patches. So let's do something else. We can use masks again here. Take this texture. It has a good spread of dark and light. If we add it as a mask to the triangle, it looks more like patchy paint. This one is more extreme. It has more contrast. This is a bit odd looking, but I hope you get the idea. I try a few variations, trial and error like usual, and end up with this. You can also scribble a few lines on top in black. And then blurbing the edges makes them look a little bit more subtle. Once applied as a mask, it has a patchy effect. I went really quickly here just as an example. I think it's worth taking your time and trying various different variations to get to the look that you want. I went with a less patchy effect on my Chandwell Road. So I hope I've inspired you with this video and shown you what you can achieve for relatively little effort. Using the techniques I've shown, you should be able to create all kinds of interesting road combinations. The Traffic Signs Manual is a treasure trove of information if you're modelling a modern UK location. But most of all, have fun. I did. After I recorded the video, I made a few alterations by adding a bus lane to the road. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, drop me a hello in the comments, 
and if you found it really useful, you could consider donating and supporting my channel by using the thanks button under the video. But for now, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon.